Welcome to the eLearnTronics explainer video for the eLearnTronics advanced learning board with logic gates. In this video, we are going to talk through what a logic gate is, why it's important. We'll go through the various types of logic gates. We'll even talk about why this board and how this board makes these lights light up differently when I press these buttons. A logic gate is something that we build into a circuit that helps us ask a question. Now, if you look, you can see that there's a number of different gates. And over here, we actually have truth tables for each of them. Don't worry, we'll go over what a truth table is. But we can see AND, OR, XOR, NAND, NOR, XNOR, and NOT. Now, those may be gibberish to you right now. By the end of this video, you'll understand what each of them means. But let's go with an easy one. Let's go with AND. Now, assuming that you have your board all ready to go, you can plug it in, turn it on, and you can actually see what happens. So my AND, if I press the A button, nothing happens. If I press the B button, nothing happens. But if I press both of them, the AND lights up. What this is doing is really asking a question. We have an input. And we have a gate that asks a question. In the case of AND, it's asking, are both of my inputs turned on? If they are, then I'll return a 1 or a yes, or I'll light up. If they are not both turned on, then I don't light up. We'll get into truth tables and a little bit of how that works in a minute. But what we really need to understand is that the logic gate uses two binary inputs. It can be more, but in this case, it's just two binary inputs. Each button is either on or off. If we're pressing it, it's on. If we're not pressing it, it's off. Each logic gate from those inputs then has a binary output. It's either on or off. And that is the key. That's all the logic gate is doing. It's taking our inputs, asking a question, and then giving us an output. If you understand that, then the rest of this video will make a lot more sense. Now, you may be asking yourself, and fairly so, why does this matter? Why do I care about logic gates? Why do I care about an AND or an OR gate? Well, the simple truth is, it's really the basis for all computing, right? We've built, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different gates here. I'm counting the NOT gate twice. You'll understand why later. We've built eight logic gates here. Multiply that by about 100 million, and you get a modern microprocessor. But a lot of what's going on inside of your computer really comes down to logic gates. So if you understand them here, you can start to see how it scales out. It's pretty remarkable how our entire modern society is built on these very basic concepts. So let's get into how we can actually use them and interpret them. Now, any logic gate that we use has something called a truth table. What a truth table tells us is that for any given logic gate, for each combination of inputs, what is the output? So it's just saying if switch A is on and switch B is off, what does an OR gate output? What does an XOR gate output? What does an AND gate output? They're written very simply. They usually start with 0, 0. That means both switches are off. Then it will move through to 1, 0. That means switch A is on, switch B is off. Then we go to 0, 1, switch A is off, switch B is on. And then 1, 1, which means both switches are on simultaneously. Every single logic gate has a corresponding truth table. By using that truth table, we can understand what we expect to occur, and then we can start to use it in circuits. Now, how are we making these work in this board? Well, we're using transistors, and transistors times about a billion is your phone. Any cell phone has billions of transistors in them, uh, you can actually find out what the count is, but everything runs on transistors. I could go through a video trying to explain it, but instead I have linked a video to Veritasium, 
uh, who I think, honestly, Derek explained it better than anyone ever has, and I am not going to try to do it justice. If you're interested in exactly how resistors work, in this case, NPN transistors, go over to Derek's video, you can watch it, and really understand at the atomic level what is going on. In this case, we're going to think of the transistor as an electronic switch. It's not exactly that, it's a little bit more complex than that. In fact, at the atomic level, it's much more complex than that. But effectively, we're able to use it as an electronic switch. If we apply electricity to a certain pin, we can allow electricity to flow. If we don't apply electricity to that pin, electricity does not flow. And in fact, with some of our gates, you can build them with switches. A perfect example would be the OR gate. An OR gate just simply says, is one of my uh, inputs on? Is this button on or is this button on or are they both on? All of those cases will return a one. You can do that with switches by just connecting both switches to the input of your LED. And then it doesn't matter which one you turn on or if you turn both of them on, your LED will still turn on. This is a little bit more advanced and it allows us to do these really cool things with these boards and have all of these logic gates working simultaneously. But ultimately, what it comes down to is really just a lot of switches. Let's start with the OR gate. The OR gate is really the simplest gate, I think. And it is really just asking the question, are either of my inputs on? That's it. If any of the inputs are on, then the OR gate will return a one. So what that means is with our truth table, zero, zero, are either of them on? No, so we return a zero. But one, zero, zero, one, 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 all of those have at least one switch that is on, and so they return a one. Now you might be curious about why one, one is returning a one when doesn't really seem like it's an or, right? That's both, that's not one or the other. And we'll get into exclusive or gates in a little bit. Now the or gate has a very specific symbol. And in fact, every logic gate has its own symbol. And there's technically more than one standard, but if you're using a schematic, you'll see this symbol and that is going to indicate an or. Now let's talk about an and gate. An and gate is kind of the opposite of an OR gate. And in fact, the outputs on the truth table are reversed. But when an AND gate is asking is, are both of my switches turned on? Are both of my inputs turned on? The, that's the AND. Are A and B turned on? That is the only situation where the AND gate will output a one. So zero, zero, that's no, that's not both. One, zero, that's not both. Zero, one, still not both. One, one, that is both. So our truth table gives us zero, 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 and one. Just like the OR gate, we do have a symbol for the AND gate. And you'll see these symbols throughout all of the other gates. So with AND and OR out of the way, those are our two basic gates. So let's get into some more complexity. Now let's talk about a NOT. What is a NOT gate? Well, the NOT gate is very simple. It's also called an inverter. It just says, are you putting in a one? Then I'll return a zero. Are you putting in a zero? Then I'll return a one. It just inverts the value of whatever is going into it. There is a similar uh, structure called a buffer. We didn't really build it here with transistors because it wouldn't make sense to, but really, if you look at the lights, on your switches, they're just indicating the state of whatever they are, and a buffer does just that. A buffer says, if you put in a one, I'll return a one. If you put in a zero, I'll return a zero. It just really shows what the gate is getting in. But the not gate is very important because it lets us flip values. Uh, we're not putting any other logic on it, we're just saying flip it. Your board has two LEDs, one for the A input and one for the B input. The symbol here is a triangle with a circle on the end. Now technically a buffer is just a triangle, 
but that little circle indicates that we have inverted the value. That'll come up later when we look at some of the NOR gates and the NAND gates and the exclusive NOR gates. So now let's get into some of the more complex logic. Now let's talk about the NOR gate. The NOR gate is really just standing for NOT OR. And one way to look at this is to just take an OR gate and put it through an inverter. In fact, that's a perfectly valid way to build a NOR gate. If you look at your logic tables, your truth tables, you can actually see that the OR gate and the NOR gate are just reverses of each other. So where OR outputs 0, 1, 1, 1, NOR outputs 1, 0, 0, 0. NOR is saying, do I not have any of my switches flipped? And only in that case am I returning a 1. The symbol here is just the OR gate, but with a circle on the end. I told you that circle was going to come in later. That just means that we are inverting the output of an OR gate. And it's really that simple. Now let's talk about the NAND gate. The NAND gate is really one of the most powerful, or at least the most used gates in computing. Now you can look up NAND gate implementations and see that a lot of the sensors and a lot of the tools that we use in everyday life do use a lot of NAND gates. Now again, just like the NOR gate, the NAND gate is really an inversion of the AND gate. So our AND gives us 0, 0, 0, 1. The NAND gives us 1, 1, 1, 0. And what the question it is asking is, do I not have both inputs turned on? So what this is saying is I'm only going to turn off if I turn on both of my inputs. In all other instances, I will return a one. The symbol here is an AND gate, but with a circle on the end. That indicates that we are inverting the output of the AND gate. It's a pretty simple gate to understand, but it's very powerful when it comes to computing. And now, finally, we get to the exclusive gates. There are two gates here, XOR and XNOR. Now you can also say these in their uh, full words, exclusive OR or exclusive NOT OR. What these are saying are, well, you remember when we had the OR gate and it, it doesn't really feel like an OR gate, it's really an OR or both. Right? If we had one gate turned on, then we outputted a one. If we had the other gate turned on, we outputted another one. But if we had both turned on, we still would output a one. What the exclusive OR gate does is it checks to make sure that we only have one. And in fact, that's the question that it is answering. Do I have only one gate turned on? Now the symbol here looks very similar to our OR gate but now we add an additional line ahead of the OR symbol. This indicates that this is an exclusive gate. Now when we look at the truth table, we have zero, zero, still gives us a zero. One, zero, and zero, one give us a one, just as expected, but what's different here is that if we have both inputs turned on, we return a zero. And that is saying we are exclusively returning a one if we have one on or the other on, but not both. Now exclusive not or could be thought of as an inverse of exclusive or. And in fact, the symbol is drawn just like that. What this is really saying is, do I not have only one gate turned on? Do I have none? or do I have both? Put another way, exclusive not or asks, are both of my inputs in the same state? If they're both off, fantastic, we return a one. If they're both on, fantastic, we return a one. But if one is on and the other's off or vice versa, then we do not return a one, we return a zero. And there you have it. That is the explanation for what logic gates are, a little bit about how they're used, and how the truth tables are figured out. Now that you know all of this, you can take your learn your logic 
advanced board from eLearnTronics and really understand. And the way to use this to really hone in on what your understanding of logic gates is, is to pick a gate, in this case I'll say and, and ask yourself, well, what would happen? Build out the truth table in your head. Here's my AND gate. If I press one of them, will it turn on? What if I press the other? Will it turn on? Nope. No. If I press both, then it turns on. So the idea here is to make the prediction, see if you understand, see if you can figure out what the gate should be doing, and then test it with the board and see if you were right. You've got a cheat sheet over here with the truth tables, but see if you can start to understand it more intuitively more from your head without having to look at the cheat sheet. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions about this board or any others, reach out to me and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Happy soldering.